In our last video, we showed you the first part of our family road trip, heading from Birmingham to Oklahoma. What we didn't get to show you was our impromptu private tour of an antebellum mansion. It was day two. We had been traveling all day, making our way through Arkansas, and it was time to stretch our legs. We searched for the closest park, got off on the nearest exit, and found Pottsville. We found the park, and it was next to a train. We love trains. It was amazing to explore and run around, and the playground was a lot of fun. What we didn't expect to find were these historic brick buildings. The first building was Citizens Bank. Everything inside looked original and so mysterious. Right across the street was Pottsville Grocery. Inside, it looked like it was under renovation. There were antique artifacts of amazing quality displayed in the front window. Growing up, my younger brother Evan always collected tins like these, and he always was really into vintage advertising, so anytime I see it, I think of him. Next to the grocery, we saw a beautiful mansion that we discovered was a historic stagecoach inn. They had well-marked signs explaining all about the history dating back to before the Civil War. We had no idea we were about to experience one of the most intriguing stops on our journey. There was no one around, and it seemed to be closed. Hi. We wandered around to the back of the house, where I made an amazing discovery. In 1790. This tree what? This tree started growing in 1790. This has been around since George Washington delivered his first State of the Union address. We were really getting a sense of the time of the place and discovering some pieces of the mystery. Digging a hole for this sign, they found seven horseshoes. Imagine how many things are underneath this ground. It was so exciting to imagine who lived here, and peeking inside, it was easy to visualize how they lived. The rooms were fully decorated with historic furniture and trinkets. This is when we really noticed the other cabins on the property. Outside of one of the cabins was this antique machinery. Wow, is this a tractor? Yeah, look at, look at how it used to work with all these gears. Yeah, this is the steering wheel that just manually turns these front wheels. Uh-huh. Like no power steering. Oh, I'm like in a spider web. Yeah. Man, I found another horseshoe. You really did? Everybody, instead of cars back in the day, everybody rode around on horses. It was at this point that we met Mr. Gary Penman. He walked across the lawn to introduce himself and explained that he was the vice president of the museum complex. He offered to show us what he called the big house, or Potts Inn. We weren't planning on staying much longer, but decided to look inside. On our way to the big house, he offered to show us the first cabin. How could we resist? These were added on later. Okay. This, this last one was a, a preacher's retreat. Oh, really? Yeah. You want to see it real quick? Sure. Yeah, we, I mean, we are just curious. And we'd love to see anything you want to show us. Right. Now, Robert E. Lee Bearden was a preacher at the Methodist Church in Little Rock, and this was his retreat in the woods. Oh, this is so This was cool. his, his hunting cabin. That's pictures of him up on the wall, and his wife, and uh, pictures of his cabin in the woods. Wow. Of course, there's a watercolor. When the family donated this cabin to us, then it, they, they gave us everything. Wow. So wait, was this cabin at a different location? And it yes, was this transported was, here? Yes, and it was transported in one piece. This cabin was packed with amazing antique pieces, like bottles, paintings, tools, fossils, and plenty of stories and fun facts from Gary. The uh, upper level here was his office, where he would study. Like this is from 1873? Uh, if not a little earlier, there okay. was a 
1873. Yeah. Yeah. I was when just reading it off the there. Okay. Uh, he told us about the structure and how it was three stories tall and had a working bathroom. He explained that the community knew how important preserving this history and this complex was and that they have been super involved in being a part of that. Uh, I guess they're pottery. These are Native American tools. Yes. Yeah. Tortoise shells. There was so much to see, but it was time to move on. Miles down the road, okay. it was donated to the museum. We've got it gutted right now. We were still on our way to the big house, but as we were passing the cabins and Mr. Gary was describing the state of each one, he mentioned the hat and clothing cabin. He offered to show us inside of this one as well. There's a bunch of stuff in there that we can look at. Oh, there's a few items in there. Yeah. Let's look at it. I love stuff like that. I think that. it's okay. Yeah, I'm excited. Are you excited, Azure? Yeah. I appreciate you taking the time to take, show us around. Oh, you're quite welcome. <gasps> Is it creepy? Oh, wow. It was so impressive. From the variety of the articles of clothing to the quality that they were in, Every piece seemed to have a personal story attached to it from someone right here in the community. This young lady right here, anyway, this is her uh, outfit that she's got on and her shoes. In the photo, the same one? Yes. Wow. And I'll explain the significance to this when we get to the big house. Okay, so this, this little girl right here. Mr. Gary's stories, as well as the stories that were posted by the Articles of Clothing, gave such a personality to each of the pieces, making it easy to see how the community really had come together and were an integral part of the preservation of Potts Inn and the museum complex. Mary Potts, that was the last one that lived in the big house. Okay. Uh, and she moved out in 1970. Uh, there was a Potts member from 18, 1850s when the big house was first built till 1970 living in this house. And the maintenance on the yard is a David Potts. Seriously? He is actually a descendant as well. Wow, what a legacy. Awful lot. Yeah. So much to see. Wow. Oh my gosh, what a pri what a privilege. This is so cool. Now Miss Willie Oates was a legislator in 1859 yeah. and that's a picture of her there. Oh, oh wow. my gosh. Okay. Hi honey. That's so cool. 1904. What do you think is gonna be inside here, Asher? Yeah, these are so mysterious. You never know what you're gonna get. You don't know what decade you're going to walk into. Dun, 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 dun. Step into my first lady's house. Cool. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. oh you got to show this to Mongi. Now, these are the inaugural gowns of the first ladies of Arkansas. That's insane. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> and these are the inaugural gowns of the first ladies of the United States. That's so cool. That's Dr. Biden. Biden. Yep. September the 7th. And uh, the first lady of Arkansas, Susan Hutchinson, she come down the day we had them installed. Really? really special. That's amazing. Gosh, you just never know. There's just so much happening. Yeah. So there was a collection of medical equipment from Dr. Teeter, who was the Pottsville town doctor in the early 1900s. Now, this, did y'all notice the breast pump? Yes. I didn't see that. It's up here. Oh, that's what that is? Yes. That breast pump is actually my wife's grandmother's breast pump. No. Really? And then I had some photographs taken in front of the store a few years ago. Oh, is that you? Yeah, that's my son. And, and the Old West look. That's yeah. awesome. It looks so real. Wow. I love it. 
It had already been a few hours, but we were finally about to see the big house, and we were so curious to know what was waiting for us. Do you think there'll be any ghosts, Azure? Yes. Let's go see. Let's go find out. A lot of people passed away, and were laid to rest in that house. Oh, really? <gasps> the original 1850s structure was quite impressive when we first walked in. It has four identical rooms off of the main hall. Each room displayed information and unique pieces that demonstrated the story of the house. The gentlemen's quarters, where they would meet in the evenings. Uh, some of the furniture is original. A lot has been donated. And some I do know belongs to the family. Others I just don't know. They just showed up here one day. <sighs> the attention to detail really made us feel like we could be one of the guests. We could almost hear the piano playing in the gentleman's parlor. Potts Inn was an important stop on the Butterfield National Historic Trail, which was originally traversed by stagecoach. And this was the overnight stop oh, for wow. those that chose to stay here overnight. This was the ladies' parlor. Ladies' parlor. Oh, it's fancy. Look and at that. And that's a square grand piano. I've literally never seen one of those in real life. That's insane. Well, they made, uh, it's made by the McCayman Company in New York City in the uh, 1850s. They made three versions of that. Uh, a small one, a mid-sized one. The mid-sized one had two ground quarters. The, uh, and this full size had all four round quarters. That's so cool. And the little girl with the dress, I yeah. thought about, yeah. her descendants donated that piano to us. This room is in a little bit of repair. Those are cool, those glasses. Yeah, it's a little dusty in here for obvious reasons. And so some of some of his descendants are still around in, this, in town, or? Oh yeah, we've got one that still cuts the grass here. In Ada Potts here, lived here uh, after Kurt Bright and his wife passed away. They lived here, and David, the one that still cuts the grass. Yeah said he didn't have any pictures of his grandfather, John. Yeah. And I told him, I said, I got a picture of your grandfather. The dining room. The dining room was designed in a similar way to the other three rooms with beautiful intention. This is when Mr. Gary started opening up about some of the personal discoveries that he had made. Pamela Potts, 1910. Would have been one of uh, James and Ada's children. That's all their kids, except for the two twins born in uh, March of 58. When I cleaned off the headstones up there, the boy lived for a day and the girl lived for eight days. Oh, man. Just jumping around everywhere here. Oh, that's okay. This is just amazing to me. And when we have uh, big functions going on over here, uh, the History Club in uh, junior high, yeah. They'll dress in period costume and come over oh and uh, be at the rooms and, and explain the rooms as the people walk by. There we go. There we go. That's so cute. Michael Ritchie has four kids now. When he moved in next door to me. Oh, really? James and Edith. I'm pretty sure this picture was taken in 1887 all the way up to where it's joined here. Golly. Mr. Gary was a wealth of information and every inch of this house seemed to have something interesting to talk about. Wow. These very ones? Yes, these are original. Uh, from a descendant of the family. Wow. That is just absolutely gorgeous. But all four of these rooms up here are exactly the same size. When the uh, stagecoach was running, there would be four double beds in each of these rooms. And when they were full, 
the kids slept in the attic or on the sleeping porch. There's a sleeping porch? Yeah, uh, and if they were full, you might not know who you were sleeping next to. Wow. John Potts here, the little boy that was in the picture downstairs. Yeah, yeah. This is him in that crib. Whoa. I think you're gonna be in our video. I think I'm gonna use a lot of the things that you're saying. Well, and I don't have a, I don't have a problem with, uh, with being in that. If it weren't for Mr. Gary, we would have never known about this place. Taxed her room. Closet was considered another room. What? Yeah. So For that, who? <laughs> so that's why that's why they have all the armoires and, and such like that. Just furnished to depict the uh, furnishings of the era. Mm. The entire inn was so intentionally and beautifully pieced together. That's so pretty. Yeah, you guys have done an absolutely beautiful job. It's just, uh, it's just amazing. That's really special, honestly. And this would be the sleeping pool. Sleeping porch. Excuse me, Mr. Wasps. Bugs in here. Hey, Wasp Town. Man. Is that an accordion? Yes. Not only did the story of the Potts family and the Potts Inn come to life with all of the furniture and decorations, but Mr. Gary's stories brought such a personal and exciting touch to the whole tour. Oh, th those are cool bottles. So Russville, how far is Russville from here? Four miles. Okay, so it's not a, it's not that big of a journey. No. Or a little bit low. The final part of the house tour was the attic space. I don't know why I don't just keep a flashlight up here. Just keep it. Wow. Because this is how it's put together. Wow. So no nails. Yeah, they just they just painted it off. Wow. Golly, that's so crazy. Yeah. See. Yeah, you can. Wow. The flashlight light makes it look even cooler. <laughs> and so you were telling me there's been people who have passed, or the people who have passed and. There's been. Uh, uh, well, the family members. That's what I was going to ask if they were family. Away here. Um, actually, George and Ray, one of the, uh, the oldest boys, he passed away. He was uh, laid in the ladies' parlor. And. Uh, this is when Mr. Gary told me about the story when he had heard from direct descendants who were there the day that one of the family members actually passed away in the ladies' parlor. This is when I realized that Mr. Gary Penman was not just vice president of Potts Inn. He was an active historian who was preserving the history of this community. And that's one, that's one piece of rope. And you did it. And this is it's your handiwork. And it's like 97 foot of rope. What? Yeah, I strung it, and then I made a wrench. Yeah. That would go down here, and then I pull it tight, drive a wedge in here. Wow. Until I got all the way around the bed. Wow. And it's it's still not bad. It needs to be tightened up a little bit more. It wasn't just about bit. this family and this house. This had become Mr. Gary's life, too. Up the caretaker shack if you all got time and I'll give you some postcards. He was so passionate and excited to share his discoveries. But it's got a lot of the names from the ladies in the community here. Oh, wow. Mary Potts. Dr. Long. Mary Potts is on here. Oh, you wanna see what the cemetery used to look like? Yeah. You have a picture before you cleaned it up? He personally uncovered yeah, the cemetery, see. preserving history that was at risk of being lost. Like from the same angle. Yes. No way, that's an, that's, go back. <laughs> okay, go back, that's, that's insane, wow. Now this was, this is his headstone. Yeah. When I found it. You ready? Yes, sir. 
Wow. That's amazing. If you live in a place like this and you've got the job you've got, you gotta be nosy, you gotta be curious. And it has been underneath that box all that time. After the tour, Mr. Gary was walking me back to our car when he insisted I see inside of the bank. There was no way I was gonna pass this up. He was explaining to me how he was the one who was taking out the carpet and restoring the original flooring, that he and the community were in the process of seeking funding to fully restore this bank and the grocery across the street. It was an operating bank, I believe till about uh, 1994. It's been robbed three times. Really? Once in the 20s, it was robbed by Santa Claus. <laughs> That's a genius uh, all, all, disguise. <laughs> all three were. Oh, and there's caught. the safe. Yeah, that's the vault I was talking about. Yeah. Gosh, the wood is beautiful. The glass is intact. The floor. Now, this floor is original. Piano built was built in 1883. It's like the drugstore down there. I turned the lights on. The key. We have the combination to this. Yeah. The safe on the inside. We do not have, it's got two combinations on it. Wow. Yale. And then when you get inside, that door is heavy. Whew. Then you have another combination. Oh, wow. To get into here. And then that's the stash. The yeah. And look at this gorgeous letter. Of course, it was, it was Citizens Bank when it opened up in 1913. Yeah. It had a whopping $15,000 in it. Wow. It's just so neat. This experience is exactly why we love taking the back roads and really taking our time to explore and enjoy the things we discover. This is why people like Gary Penman are so important. Mr. Gary has dedicated his life to uncovering the secrets and mysteries about this family and this house. Bringing the community together with his passion and curiosity, he has helped to keep the legacy of the Potts family alive. Because they shared their stories and preserved their family's histories, and because they did it together, Potts and Museum and the community that it represents is so unique, special, and memorable.